because of the concerns about um, following a large number of people long term to really be able to look at the, the long term safety of FMT, um, the AGA in cooperation with a number of other societies, the Infectious Disease Society, the Pediatric GI Society, CCFA, Crohn's and Colitis Foundation of America, um, felt that it would be very important to actually develop a large scale registry to be able to follow patients. Um, and we were lucky enough to get uh, grant support from the NIAID, um, an NIH grant. Um, so the AGA is helping set up this infrastructure and will be able to follow these patients for up to 10 years. Now we plan to start this um, registry sometime in early 2017. Our goal is to um, get 75 sites that are all doing FMT and enroll about 4,000 patients over the next two or three years and then we'll hopefully be able to follow them for up to 10 years. We want this to be something that clinicians can do very easily. We don't really expect a busy clinician to sit there and enter data for hours and hours. So we're working on that process. We're going to be involving a few sites to help us kind of beta sites to, to test the registry and the data entry to make sure that we, you know, have this, um, we're collecting all of the data that we want and that it's not too burdensome for the physicians. And then we really plan on rolling out um, very early in 2017 with enrolling, you know, the first 50 sites um, next year. Clinicians will be playing an active role and will benefit from this registry in a number of ways. Um, first of all, they will be an active participant in, uh, in helping to advance the practice of FMT as well as the science of FMT by putting information into this registry. As this data is being analyzed, um, we hope to have a better understanding of what the best practices are for doing FMT. That will help guide clinicians actually doing FMT to do a better job or, or to, to be more efficient in the way they do FMT. And then obviously, as I've, as I've mentioned, there's always a chance that there could be a warning signal that we would detect from this registry that would be of significant importance to practitioners of FMT. Again, it's bi-directional. The practitioners are playing an active role in, in helping us to collect this information in return uh, real deliverables like how we can better do FMT as well as looking for warning signals, let alone the science that we would understand. All of this would be benefits to the clinician also. This um, is going to be a real asset to people who are interested in microbiome research because in addition to the clinical and safety data that we're going to get, we're also going to be having a biobank. And we've partnered with the American Gut Project um, and they're going to serve as the biobank for this registry. So patients are going to have stool collections before and after FMT, and we're going to get stool samples from their donors, and those will be sequenced, and uh, additional specimens will be maintained for an indefinite period of time at this point um, for you know, potential future studies. But any researchers who are interested in using data from this registry uh, for, their, you know, for their own projects, you know, this is meant to be a shared resource and we will have a mechanism by where, you know, if you're doing some type of microbiome research and you're interested in um, looking at data from those samples, that would be something that you could apply for and um, you would be allowed to, to mine this data um, for your own uh, purposes. AGA uh, has been uh, really indispensable in helping with the application, you know, the grant application, um, getting the contracts together with uh, the CRO that's going to help build the registry, and is really um, devoted to this being a success and making this a success, and has been very helpful that way. That being said, you know, we expect that there will be challenges. Um, there. We're asking busy clinicians to take time out of their schedule to, you know, enroll these patients and upload their data. And, you know, we're hoping that, you know, the, the people that are doing FMT out there understand how important this is and are willing to contribute and, and, and make those sacrifices so that we can collect this data. The registry will move the gut microbiome field forward because this is human information. We just don't have very much human information. We're beginning to see this. My view is that over the next decade, that's one of the biggest challenges, one of the most, most important areas in a micro, microbiome space is for us to understand how the microbiome either causes disease or can be used to prevent disease in humans. And so the fact that we're collecting a lot of information in humans as well as biospecimens is, is, is fundamentally important for the entire field 
for, for many reasons as proof of concept, hopefully, that some of the things we study in animal models are relevant to human biology for the purposes of safety. But then also even thinking about the next generation of products, there's probably an enormous amount of information and things that we can learn from FMT, proof of concept ideas that could be lead to the development of next generation products through partnerships, for example, with industry. The FMT registry will, I think, be extremely important for both clinicians who do FMT and their patients who receive FMT because, again, as I mentioned earlier, um, there's really a positive information about the effectiveness, long-term safety, and even the best way to do FMT. So hopefully by evaluating a large number of patients in the United States um, who receive FMT, we'll be able to answer some of these unanswered questions.